here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Tell all your friends. We've got the greatest information that's going to save you time, money, and heartache by watching InventRight TV. Okay, here we go. It seems like everybody loves the mistakes that I've made, so I'm going to share a few more. In fact, um, I'm going to go a little deeper in some, some of the bad mistakes I made. So here you go, everybody. I'm going to talk about making mistakes um, when you're signing a licensing agreement. Right before you sign it, what happens after, but signing a licensing agreement, if you make these mistakes, it could be huge. Now, I haven't made all the mistakes I'm going to talk about, but I have made a few. Okay, so the first one I'm going to talk about. Realize signing a licensing agreement is reason to celebrate. It truly is. You've done everything right. You've put together, you've come up with a great idea. Congratulations. You've got great marketing material. A company likes it. You reached out to them, and now they want to do the dealing. Fantastic. But realize this is not going to be easy and it's going to take a long time. And when that contract first comes over to you, it's going to be so ugly, you're going to want to pull your hair out. In fact, you're going to go, what do you mean? This is not what we talked about. I can't sign this. So don't, don't panic. That's, take a deep breath. You'll get through it. Okay. But it's going to take a lot longer than you think and it's going to cost money. Yeah, I know. I said it. It's going to cost money. But this is maybe part of the time where you spend a little money. Because if you do it wrong here, you just wasted so much time and don't do that. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple tips that can save you some money. Okay, so realize it's big picture. Number one, it's going to take more time than you think. Be patient, right? Have someone. Number two, have someone help you. Absolutely. All this other stuff I think you can do yourself. But when it comes to a licensing agreement, I've done them for over 30 years. You need help. Now, what I'm going to also tell you, there's ways to kind of shave that bill. Find someone that can help you negotiate the business terms. That's the first thing. It's business terms, royalty rates, minimum guarantees, performance clauses. It's the money terms. You need someone that can help you that has business experience of what those should be and how to ask for it. Right. And the second thing you're going to bring in is a licensing attorney for all the legal terms. There you go. And that guy is going to be really expensive. But if you bring him in when you've negotiated most of it, you're going to re reduce your overall bill. It's very, very simple. Don't have a licensing attorney. I love these guys, but don't have them negotiate your contract. That's foolish. Maybe he can help you with some of the legal terms. But if you don't know the business terms and how to negotiate and you try to do it on your own, it's not going to go great. OK, so that's number two. Number, number three, do not start with big items in the term sheet. I've seen that before, you guys, and it just doesn't work. It doesn't work very well. There's always going to be these big issues like performance clause. There might be um, ownership of... Uh, well, that's the ownership of um, your intellectual property. Um, there might be some other things. Minimum guarantees. That's another thing. Those are really big ticket items. You don't want to negotiate up front. You want to negotiate later in that process. So don't do that. That's number three. Um, and realize, um, what, I got number four here. Have a license. Uh, yeah, like I said before, you're, um, you're going to need that licensing attorney, but not to negotiate the deal. All right. Here's some of the mistakes I made um, or some of the mistakes I've seen. First mistake I've seen over and over and over again. Never sign the licensing agreement in your name. That's right. It's got to be in some business entity. I prefer LLC. It's really easy to do. It's very, very affordable. I love that type of structure. Very simple. But never do it in your name. I see that all the time. Don't do that because you'll be personally liable. That's right. So find out in your state of how to file an LLP. And uh, in most states, it's very, very, very affordable. California, which I no longer live in, um, it's very expensive. But Nevada, where I live in now, it's very affordable. But don't do it in your name. And I see it all the time. OK, that's number one, two, three, four. Number five, don't write your own contract. Don't write it or even have someone write it for you to submit to these guys. They're going to want to write their own contract. But guess what? I made a mistake. 
there was a deal that came in. I had a lot of experience. I really didn't care about this technology too much. It was kind of a carve out of a bigger technology. No big deal. So guess what? I've been around long enough and I Frankenstein a contract, sent it over. Don't do that. It was, it's not worth that much. In fact, it was stupid. It was too vague, right? And that causes problems and it caused me a few issues too. So don't do that. I don't care if you think you can do it, don't cannibalize some licensing agreement you find in the internet. Don't do that. Have the company you're licensing it to submit it to you. Even though it's going to be awful, that's okay. But they need to spend the money to send it to you. Okay, next. Um, minimum guarantees. I love minimum guarantees. Um, uh, in my first deal, James, go ahead, put the Michael Jordan wall ball up here. Uh, guess what? I didn't have any minimum guarantees. I was just so happy I had a deal. Uh, but it didn't come back to bite me. In some situations, I have seen this hurt people. But because um, Michael Jordan is so well known, and the company I licensed it to, Ohio Art, did such a great job, and it sold for 10 years, it didn't matter if there was any minimum guarantees there at all. Guess what? Because I didn't own anything, I filed for zero intellectual property. They were just being kind. Great company there. But guess what? There's, looking back, there's no minimum guarantees. They could have stopped it tomorrow. But so what? I really didn't care. I was just happy to sign that deal. But if you have invested a lot of intellectual property, if you have invested a lot of time and energy, you have to make sure there's some minimum guarantees in there. And the reason why, if you don't have that type of performance clause, they can just walk away, not sell one, and they own it. There you go, they own it. So you got to have it. Here's another tip that I, this is, a, hey, another mistake, two mistakes that I've made. Sometimes when you do sign a deal, that if it goes to a non-exclusive, it might go, if it goes from an exclusive to a non-exclusive, right? They don't hit their minimum guarantees, but in the clause it says, if we don't hit our minimum guarantees, we don't have an exclusive, but we have a, we have a non-exclusive. I made that mistake. Don't do it. I made that mistake. Here's the second mistake. I made it. Guess what? It, it didn't have any power then because when I tried to license it to another company, I couldn't give them an exclusive because I did a non-exclusive with that one company. Said it right there. Made a mistake. Didn't see it. Didn't realize that when you can give someone an exclusive, it has more value. So when that company did not hit the minimum guarantees, came back to me but they still had rights to sell it. There's my mistake. Um, let's see. Top loading a deal. Let's talk about top loading a deal. Um, there's some industries that will give you an advance, and one of them is the toy industry. And uh, I remember um, one toy when I was early on starting out, one, t one company, Worlds of Wonder, which I was working there and I left, and I came back as a freelancer and I started submitting my own ideas. That was one of the reasons why I left. Um, they gave me $15,000 for a product called Hattie Surprise. And James, if you can find that awful idea that they paid me $15,000 for, it would be remarkable. Hopefully James can find it. But guess what? They, in the toy industry, they, they, they will pay you some money to hold it. And that was a holding fee. And that $15,000 was not even a top load. They fifteen thousand dollars, and they were going to hold it for three months. But whenever you ask for money up front, right, you have to realize you're top loading the deal, and those guys rather pay you on the back end. What I rather you say, look, instead of, and this is what I do for most of the companies: don't pay me upfront money. Don't pay me enough money for me to go buy a car. Why don't you pay me money to help me pay for my patents, or maybe help for pay for some of the patents I filed in the past? Because that way it's really, um, it's more of a partnership. You're going forward with some really good business strategies rather than saying, hey, give me the 20 grand, I'm going to buy a new car. Don't do that. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, and I think I'm just about coming to the end, is a performance clause. Now, I did this right. right? I did a couple of mistakes along the way after all these years, but this is one thing I did right and I'm very proud of. Um, having the performance clause and minimum guarantees are extremely important. Um, but the one I forgot, I want to say, it's not performance clause, but I want to say um, any improvement clause. I'm sorry, improvement clause. And the reason why that's important to me is that they're going to make improvements. And you have to own them. You really do. And the reason why, in case the contract 
gets breached and you get it back and they, and they own some of the improvements, then, then you've got some issues. You have to have access to those improvements. Now, there's a couple different ways you can structure it, and I don't have time to talk about those issues. But the bottom line is this. You're the inventor. You've come up with an idea. There's going to be improvements. You need to own them. That's not easy to negotiate. That's why you need someone with a little bit of experience to help you with that. Okay, I talked a lot. There's quite a few other things I could have probably mention. Hopefully this helps. So in a nutshell, it's really, really fast. You guys, contracts are fantastic. You can do it. Celebrate, don't celebrate too early until it's signed. Get someone that can help you do it at, with the business terms and then bring in a licensing attorney at the very end to make sure everything's done right. Don't put it in your name, not a great idea. Don't top load deals, companies don't like it unless it's maybe in the toy industry. Make sure there's minimum guarantees so if they, they don't get it, uh, they don't reach it, you get it back. Make sure there's an improvement clause in there that if they make an improvement, you still own it. There you go. Hopefully I went through most of those, shared a little heartache of some of the mistakes I made. Once again, Stephen Key, thanks for watching. Keep on subscribing to Invent Right TV. Thank you. Hi, this is Stephen Key, and I just want to thank you for watching Invent Right TV. We're here to save you time, save you money, and show you how you can bring your products to market through licensing. So please subscribe down below, click on the button, and tell your friends. Thank you.